Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Mitten Backstage. I'm sitting down with Lauren Kranz. Now, this dude I've known for a few years now. He's a, you know, a, a friend to the music community, uh, you know, a Bay City supportive musician. Um, he plays drums uh, in the Mark Lavin Good Band. Uh, but also has the ability to play keys. He plays keys and co-leads the Barbarossa Brothers. Uh, you know, a wonderful project, great music, great people. And he's also an educator. He, you know, has a lot of uh, perspective in doing music full time for 12 years. So a lot of insight, a lot of um, experience. You know, he's been into music school. He, you know, he's he's got a lot of uh, perspective, and it's great to chat with him as it always is you know we have a lot of conversations on the road and at shows so it's nice to share those with you all today if you enjoyed today's conversation and you want to support these podcasts that i'm doing you can head on over to patreon.com slash duchess nettiger there you can contribute at different tier levels to get early access to podcast episodes in different formats exclusive merch and more You can also find these podcasts on various platforms thanks to Anchor.fm, which I mentioned earlier. And through that site, you can also contribute directly. So if you want a tip for the podcasts, all the money just goes right back into the production of these podcasts and, um, you know, paying the internet, (laughs) essentially paying for good quality internet. You can also find more things that I'm up to at DutchessNetiker.com. Remember... Uh, next week, actually, <laughs> next week uh, uh, is my birthday, so um, a lot of things are going to be updated. You know, little little tweaks and changes and, and and things that you can, you know, subscribe to, be involved in. You know, trying to offer different things for different people and you know build out what I'm what I'm doing on a monthly basis. So uh, get ready for that. Hey, <laughs> how's it going? Good, man. That's good. Are you were uh, you were with King Possum this weekend? Uh, I mean, it, I think it was booked as Mark Lavin Good Bands, but uh, it was all the dudes from King Possum uh, doing that uh, John Prine tribute. Out at oh, Dan out in Carlinville, Carlinville, Illinois. Oh, okay. Right on the prairie there. Yeah. So that was that was the crazy uh, craziness of this weekend. <laughs> Wake up at Huggy's place. 4.30 uh, uh, Saturday morning, Whoa. ride out in uh, in Vantasy in the legal immigrants van oh. to Carlinville, <laughs> Illinois. Yeah. <laughs> so that was bringing back flashbacks right away yeah. of our trip, you know. <laughs> and yeah, and then we played the set, turned right back around, uh, came home, you know. I joked it was three-day weekend packed into 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a lot. I it, it reminds me of when I think – when uh oh what was it i don't know if you're it might have been nathan coles on that gig um we played um a festival in ohio that i can't the name is escaped i think it's smoky mountain something festival Mm -hmm. i know the one you're talking about yeah yeah and it was like on the way there there was just you know extra or no that one was a straight shot but we got back late I'm thinking of when we played with Mark and it was at the, I think it was at the Ohio recording company. Oh yeah. And we took the dolphin. Yeah. And it was like, we, we had to stop in Lansing, uh, you know, to go go to elderly instruments. And then, you know, we're like (laughs) taking this slow car that could max out at 60 all the way to Ohio. And yeah, just the late night. (laughs) I'm pretty glad we didn't take the dolphin because that would have been, uh, a seven-hour drive uh, would have been ten, probably. Yeah, a lot less comfy. Yeah, I'm. You know, as I've been looking at, you know, just partially for fun and partially for like, oh, it'd be cool to, you know, take a have some sort of setup for festivals and for touring, um, maybe just locally or regional that would be cool to travel in. Um, mm-hmm. I see, like. I'm curious to see like how newer, you know, like the dolphin it's, it's still moving, which is like, that's crazy considering how old it is. Um, yeah, it gets some looks. I mean, it, it's got vibe to be sure. <laughs> yeah. It's it, 
but and now it's like you know how is there what's the 2021 version of a dolphin like what do yeah. you <laughs> my wife have been my, my wife and i have been looking for for just that t- type of thing and like i don't think that it exists under ninety thousand dollars you know like i mean if you want to get the real high end i guess like the the version of that in in this present day would be like a sprinter mm-hmm. type vehicle you know or some offshoot but yeah. yeah, I know. I like, like the dolphin was the equivalent of uh, of the of the sprinter back in the day. <laughs> I think it was a little more catered to not that class. So, right, and and well, and I see people who've made like you know, uh, like I think Steve Leaf and Morgan Hainer have the same like a Ford Transit. Um, sure. And uh, I know Lauren Johnson. I don't think she has a Transit, but she has some other van that uh you know has seating in the front and then like plenty of space in the back where she could like furnish it like a a little bedroom yeah um, absolutely i mean if you uh, yeah if you got your wits about you you can take a 15 passenger van make it super livable do you know um uh pinter whitnick they're called alex mendenhall uh and uh and his uh, girlfriend who her name escapes me right now sorry but um they oh, actually just yeah they, they just actually uh like built their van out to be like their home on the road i think they actually like even gave up their place in detroit and they're just going on the road living on the road you know wow. and they've shared the 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 journey of building it and it looks amazing inside you know I'm not sure how big it is it might be a transit but yeah well and and it's i feel like as much as i've you know I've, some of the youtube stuff i watch there's a a dude from new zealand who started a channel called uh living big in a tiny house and he just kind of you know travels around around the world uh and even like when he was doing stuff in the states he like he bought a a, a decommissioned ambulance and converted it into like a tiny home on wheels right. um ghostbusters vibes <laughs> and just to to see like all the different concepts of like oh you know like like earth ships or people converting you know shipping containers or people you know just finding like oh there's i have land and i can just park this thing and kind of build out from the thing i've parked on this land um man i wish i was crafty in that way mm -hmm. (laughs) i wish i like that was like some like inside of me maybe i don't know maybe it is maybe someday but but yeah that's a that's a great gift when you have the when you can have it's like a vision you know you like have the vision of of what it is and then you learn the skills you need and pull all the pieces together to do it right yeah just but getting yeah. all the resources and all the yeah it, it seems like a lot of people who if they didn't it, it's like if they already had the land it was easier to put money towards the house or if they already had the knowledge it was way easier for them to just you know start to finish build something from Mm -hmm. recycled or free materials or um you know and and i've i've seen like on that living big in a tiny house thing i've seen you know everyone from you know like oh i built this thing that literally is just a place to sleep and like a couple extra things and it's super cheap because i don't care about appearance just about how it functions and then there's other right. people who like they make a tiny little cyber hub and they're like, oh, I'm a full time, you know, like live streamer and I, you know, play video games and music mm-hmm. and they and this just, is where I sleep. <laughs> yeah, I sleep right here. Well, that's kind of like me is like, right here. Sleep over there. <laughs> nice, <dude. Yeah. laughs> Working from home. Yep. All good. Doing a lot of that. Have have uh, Zoom lessons been any better, or have you been able to like incorporate in person lessons again? Or uh, yes, I mean Zoom has been good. Actually, uh, uh, this is uh, this is nice today because uh, I don't have any lessons for the next two weeks, um, and then we're actually transitioning back to in person. So this nonprofit that I work for, Major Chords for Minors, we've been doing Zoom lessons for basically a year since so September of 2020. And, um, yeah, to, uh, with that, every, you know, everything coming back and, and school back in session, it seems like the right time maybe to, to go back and do that. You know, it, it was, and it was kind of weird because I think a lot of people were maybe expecting that throughout the summer, but that also didn't feel like there was the infrastructure yet mm-hmm. to go there, you know? So, so yeah, headed back to in-person. I've been doing like 15, between like 15 and 25 Zoom lessons 
all year, you know, for a week. So not 25 Zoom lessons this year. <laughs> 25 per week. <laughs> yeah, that's that's uh, much better than <laughs> like a handful of students here and there. Um, yeah, so it's been good. And, and uh, yeah, maybe uh, when I talked to you about it last, there, there was definitely some rocky patches getting going. But by like around January, uh, things I felt like I started to hit my stride with it, you know, figured out some workarounds. How do you get these kids the, the material? The thing I should say is um, major chords for minors it's all under 18. So it's like kids eight to 18 that I'm working with. So all school age, uh, young people. And, uh, so, you know, so that brings its own challenges because you have to kind of liaison with the parents. And, but then in the lesson, you're really only talking to the kids, you know, maybe you can be like, Hey, can you get your dad in here for a sec? So I can chat with them. But, but usually like they're in a room and, you know, mom and dad have gone up, gone off to have some peace for 30 minutes or whatever. So, <laughs> so it's, yeah, getting the, getting messages, communicating that back to the parents too, is, uh, is sometimes a challenge, but yeah, yeah looking forward to, to seeing them in person. There's like, as I'm sure, you know, there's certain things in a, in a zoom lesson that just don't come across as well as you can get them across in person, you know, especially playing piano, playing drums. Like these are things where it really helps to be in the room. Yeah, it's it, and it's it's way easier. I, I feel like the the uh, you know on the audio end, like just even simple things of like, oh, I can play back what I'm teaching you, but you might not have the equipment to receive it with as much clarity or my something on my end. My you know the internet could be weird. Exactly. The, yeah, and the, that's been yeah. a challenge too. Is is uh, getting in these lessons? Maybe it's like five or six o'clock, and I'm in with my student, but then like three of her sisters are all streaming or, or, you know, like YouTubing or whatever. And mom's working in the kitchen and her bandwidth is like this, you know? And like, so she's coming through really choppy. Yeah. And yeah, that's uh, that's a challenge too, for sure. But uh, it's been a lot of positives too. And like, I felt like right around September of last year when I started uh, actually being able to communicate with my students again and like have that every week, things definitely, uh, quality of life rose for me a lot yeah. just, to, just to be you know teaching again and and having that that connection every week for sure yeah they, they me through some stuff you know yeah just to have something like that's you know any sort of consistency in the last you know year and a half like that's that's definitely what I've been trying to focus on is like okay I know I like people want album reviews i can you know focus on those people you know want recording i can you know focus on recording and then just you know keeping an eye on like okay when can we do stuff again when can we play shows when can we you know travel even right. to another city like <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then come may it was like oh oh okay we're doing this yeah. let's go <laughs> let's do it everything else <laughs> shove it to the back burner yeah get out of here yeah yeah this summer dude how uh how was your summer is like because i feel like this past weekend was crazy but mm -hmm. it also was doable because it felt like a bit of a finish line for me where i've been pushing hard got to get through august i can i know i can do this and then finally this past weekend uh, i'm through that september is much lighter and like i said you know uh, in-person lessons coming up amy and i are going to a couple concerts you know, um, a good friend of mine is getting married this Saturday. So it's a lot of positives and time away from gigs. Yep. You know, is that is, like, is that where you're at too? Or, or do you feel like you're still going to be pretty busy through September? Well, <laughs> I think it, it, I, I agree with the sense of it that August was crazy. It was, it was, for me, it was kind of a mix of like, you know, I, I, end of july like starting off the month with the like oh i got a you know bladder stone issue and then oh yeah of course right yeah and you've, like you've had an even crazier summer <laughs> yeah well it, and it was this month kind of taught me like you know i i i feel like i reached a point you know in my you know thinking about me as a, a person and being like oh yeah i can't just like shrug off everything <laughs> like I, you know, right. even when you spend only like one day, you know, part of one day uh, in the hospital, and then, you know, you take a week off to like, kind of readjust and you think, oh, I got enough time. And then you realize, oh, 
I didn't really fully get the rest I needed because I still had those like, you know, the, I need to do some yeah. kind of work. I need That's to do this kind of thing. Time. I need right. to. Yeah. So um, one thing that has come out of this month is I'm planning my first vacation for November, <laughs> which right, soon will be just, just you or with friends or uh, I think it'll just be me. Um, I know we might have one with earth radio. Like we did one last fall. Um, I love so that you guys do that. We yeah. That's not like you don't play any shows or anything, right? It's just like, no, time, hang time. Yeah. It's all, all creative. All just, you know, we, we split an Airbnb somewhere where there's, you know, woods and water and, and that's find, uh, I love that. Yeah. And just come together. And even if it's, you know, like, four days it's like you know we can just hang out and not have to like be in a meeting about business or only talk about you know uh, like only shedding tunes not that we only are business when we're around each other but it's nice to try to shut that off though you know even yeah. in, even in hang time it's often just like yep what do we, you know <laughs> hey where are you guys playing or what what new venues are there? Are you just like yeah. stupid, stupid business stuff? And I've like, I've always been aware of myself falling into those, like falling into those uh, pathways and, and those habits, but uh, it's tough to break, you know, it's a tough habit to break. And yeah, just having like that time together, uh, I'm sure is really nice because everybody can kind of relax and let all that flow. And then when you reach the edge of having anything else to talk about work related, then th that's when all this other stuff, uh, comes in i'm sure uh, i'm i'm that's got to be so beneficial for you guys as a as a band you know yeah it helps it it just kind of helps reinforce like you know the the reasons why we're in the band you know the friendships that predated the band and also kind of expanded with new additions to the band um but also reminding like it, kind of that reminder of like, hey, you know, we don't always, you know, we're not always on the same page thinking business wise, or we're not always on the same page, like with certain things we're trying to navigate. Uh, but we can still come together and like, enjoy each other's company and, and have fun. And, and that's like, that's, it's a good reminder too. That's like, oh yeah, we're, we're business partners, but we're also, you know, friends, you know, band family. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful, man. That's awesome. We had um, uh, Barbarossa Brothers had something like that. Like the last time we did anything on those lines, and we still played gigs, but we got to go uh, over to Beaver Island. Oh, nice. Um, for sure, this is summer of 2018, so that you know tells you how long it's been. <laughs> but um, that was really cool. We did have to, we had to play, and so we had a bunch of gear and stuff too, but it was nice because we had like at least one night where we could have fun. I don't know if you've, uh, if you've ever like played the festival or, or been to Beaver Island at all, but it's just, it's such a unique experience. You know, we, we didn't bring a car over or anything. So they like hooked us up with this like nineties Ford Windstar that, wow. <laughs> yeah, that and uh, there was uh, yeah six of us traveling. So six of us plus all our gear. And they like put us in a little, uh, little cabin at the edge of town. And it was hilarious because that that Windstar was just so loud that you could hear it two blocks away anytime you were driving. So it's like, oh yeah, there's the band. I hear them. They're coming. They're on their way. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah. That that what you just said reminded me of of our time out there. Just yeah, hanging on the island. Nothing else to do really. But, right. Uh, but just hang and chill and and talk about life and you know hang out under the stars and enjoy that. You know. But yeah, yeah we were long overdue for something like that. Definitely. Well, and thing of Beaver Island, I, um, you know, I grew up. I, th I think it was four. It was either f three or four different summers. It might have been one more, but uh, my parents and grandparents would um, split renting a cottage, and we would go, you know, for like a week in the summer. Sweet. Um, and so, yeah, I remember like amazing, yeah, all those trips as a kid. And then I know <laughs> I, I, you know, I've been trying to get Earth Radio into the the Beaver Island Music Festival, mm -hmm. and like 2019, it was like, oh, we're we're full up, sorry. It was like, okay. And then you know, early talks for 2020 before things were shutting down. I was like, oh yeah, that we we're interested. We'll let you know. And then 
you know, this year it was kind of like, oh, well, we already kind of booked the festival and then, you know, it's whatever lineup we had for this year. Um, but we recently did an interview for, um, what is it? The, the voice of Beaver Island, the, the radio broadcast program. Um, really? They've been doing, I know that was a thing. Yeah. They've been doing a, um, a series this summer with the Michigan music Alliance. They, um, they come down to third coast and then a band joins them, uh, for an interview and in studio performance. And I know they, they've, I know they interviewed uh, Serena Chandler um, because she just put out an album last year Mm -hmm. and she, you know, sings with Blue Water Kings and um, has a lot of fun people on her record. Uh, And Earth Radio did an interview um, and our live in studio performance is kind of, it's, it's a teaser of the videos we did back in May with uh, Dogtown Studios. So nice. Very cool. So you guys, you guys are sitting on some content right now then. Yeah, just uh, you know, like three videos. Yeah, three cool. videos. And um which hey, that's better than <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, you know, I feel like Dogtown, I really only became aware of them during the pandemic. And what a great resource to have. Yeah. You know, I watched so many great live streams uh, you know, this past year from from over there. I'd really like to make something happen with them in the coming year for sure yeah they're super super nice and super like they somehow did like the way the way they got started was with the they just did a whole year of essentially exposure they just were like hey we're two video dudes we have this space uh what bands should come through and do content with us and through the process of like you know earth radio did stuff and you know a handful of other bands throughout that year um did content it all you know got published it was looking nice uh, you know people were starting to be like who's Dogtown?" yeah and then they really attracted at, some attention yeah and then at the end of the year they kind of leveraged that attention towards a fundraiser and they you know they made some of the cost back of for doing all those videos pro bono um and now they just you know people know who they are and it's they keep making they just did a video with uh uh what was it it was lauren johnson with uh hannah and and emily Emily petersmark (laughs) yeah yeah, yeah. really really good really good stuff there and they've uh even just the look of those videos is like unmistakable Mm -hmm. you know they've got kind of their own little uh little brand happening in a very cool way for sure yeah yeah Yeah, sometimes you have to give it away (laughs) (laughs) yeah they that's like I feel like that's the only time, well, I'm sure there's other times, but like the, the, the way they, they treated exposure kind of made sense in the sense that it wasn't their own, like they weren't just jobless giving out free work. They were, you know, still had other work they were transitioning out of, and then they were building this other brands over the year. Um, but yeah, they, they, uh, they know what they're doing. <laughs> Yeah, I've uh, I've enjoyed seeing that stuff. That's one thing cuz I'm, you know, east side of the state. So like but I there's so many artists, you know, and and bands that I admire on uh, in your area on the west side and and like I've had, you know, the I've been lucky enough to to meet, you know, folks and and get to know y'all and and country as friends. So it's like it was really nice for me to be able to check in with people sometimes just even seeing them online or whatever during a year of of not really being able to play over there or, or even kind of connecting a lot of the time, you know, like we saw, we saw each other a few times, but, um, yeah, but yeah, there were a lot of people that I didn't see for like a year or more, <laughs> you know, we just drew and I just did a show at fetch brewing, okay. in Hall, you know, a little North of Muskegon. And we had, you know, a couple of people come up from, uh, from Grand Rapids to that. And it's like, oh yeah, I haven't seen you in 18 months. <laughs> we used to, chat and and play shows together all the time so so yeah more of that i need more of that for sure yeah i think that's something that you know the 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 super fans of of the michigan music scene they kind of understand the community aspect of it where you know you can't go to shows there are people you just won't see for weeks and 
and but as soon as you get into you know a festival environment or like a show with a, a few different bands on a lineup like you're gonna start you're gonna you know I, I i thought about smiling acres i'd forgotten you know part of the fun of just being at a festival for more than your set is yeah, you get to into people yeah. yeah just catching up with like everybody you're like oh yeah I've, like how have you I, I thought i reached out to you but i totally you know like there's so many people to keep track of that having a festival like that just i walked up and i didn't even recognize mike young <laughs> no i was like i was like hi i'm lauren how are you doing hey lauren i'm mike young <laughs> like, yeah we you totally went to colorado together sorry dude you're wearing a hat and shade so I don't feel too bad, but also I'm an asshole. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it was good. Smiling Acres was like the best. That was a highlight of the summer for sure, man. That was mm -hmm. great. Yeah. yeah. I look forward. I'm really ex excited to see them using that space for more stuff. You know, uh, Carrie's got Wild Zen Yoga coming up, and uh, I'm sure they'll do lots of other little, little festivals and whatnot on those grounds. You know, that's very mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, because some of those some of those small towns, I think of like, you know, the the people who want to go see shows, they they sometimes have to drive, you know, pretty far to get to a yeah. big city center. So to have an event space that can kind of curate a lot of different experiences within like a tri city range yeah. is It'll sweet. Be, what is that like forty minutes for you? Yeah, th right. I think it was like just just about forty minutes, or maybe a little over. But yeah, not that not even pretty doable. Yeah. that crazy <laughs> considering cool. yeah. michigan driving anyway <laughs> that was uh that's exciting that's something really positive that happened this summer was seeing them kick that off just nailed it great job guys yeah with the a good amount of sponsors and like the you know a good stage aesthetic and you know having infrastructure and not just you know some guy digging out old pa speakers from his garage and <laughs> hoping they're still working like just yeah. just the attention they, to detail <laughs> they hit the ground running to be sure yeah i was again super grateful to be to be even on that bill you know through my association with mark and knowing you guys a little bit and everything it's like yes yes <laughs> thank you for having us out yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah have um I know, I mean you've been mentioned or you mentioned you've been teaching a lot um mm -hmm. have gigs yeah been fairly consistent or have they kind of been like stuff here and there or? i mean it's been it's been a lot just in the summer you know uh like come when whenever that mask mandate came out i think it was like middle of may mm -hmm. maybe april I'm not sure now I, I think like middle of may was when masks came off right basically right like that one weekend they were like okay this is this is done now <laughs> go be free <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, ever since then, it, it just felt like it exploded, you know, and I was kind of like kind of going back processing uh, a few days ago and June was not as busy, but then July was, was really busy. Uh, even with, uh, me taking like a week off at the end of the month to go up North with my wife and my in-laws. Um, even with that, you know, it was still was, I don't know, eight or nine gigs in, in a month, you know, plus a week off, like, okay. And then <laughs> August was yeah 14 or 15 shows that i packed into the month um yeah which, yeah which is a lot you know for, for, <laughs> for any summer but especially for this one this summer was like i don't know it just felt really unique because of what we experienced last summer and then coming into this summer with everything i kind of learned through the pandemic like uh the like, i've said you know since march 2020 like how much perspective that time in particular, you know, having six months of gigs prepped and booked and then it all just evaporating and like how, like the different viewpoint I gained on what a gig is and what a schedule is and how obviously how uh, fleeting it can be, you know, but also just, just it's not worth the stress it's not worth uh, a missed night's sleep or you know or losing any sleep and and it's just um i wanted to kind of bring that that idea of not stressing about things and not stressing about double bookings or oh i can't make this so sorry you know into this summer into whenever gigs started happening again and i almost succeeded <laughs> that uh, it was 
Yeah, uh, there were times when I when I definitely let the summer get the best of me, you know. Mm -hmm. But also, it was good to have that added perspective of, uh, you know, don't don't forget about what's important. Don't forget to take your dog on walks a couple times a week at least, or cook uh, dinner for your wife uh, a couple times this week. You know, it can't all be about the gig schedule. Yep. In the summer, you know, after uh, after the pandemic, I can never go back to that. Yeah, I I, de I definitely felt that going into this summer with, you know, some some Earth Radio gigs, you know, a couple gigs with Mark. Um, yeah. But having a lot of a lot of weddings to just kind of, sure. you know, yeah. that there's aspects I like of, you know, working with Blue Water Kings in the sense that there's a there's a template for a lot of stuff, so you get, you know, you, you learn. A, a, a handful of tunes and then they just kind of keep circulating in through different people's set lists with different band combinations um but it was also like i don't know i the more i the more i did weddings the more i was just kind of like because I, I still have like 11 more before I really <laughs> wow was, yeah it's uh you know it, part of it was you know all the weddings that got canceled last year got moved to this year nice. and then people who had booked out for next year you know it, it all kind of got crammed together sure. um but i'm also doing you know i i did a wedding for someone who just saw me play at the listening room and then came and saw earth radio and was like can i just hire you and your singer for <laughs> nice. for our for our wedding and um that was a fun wedding uh and you know i'm playing like steve leaf's wedding craig avery's wedding chris Cranick's wedding <laughs> that's cool weddings for musician friends are always a good time yeah those that's would be cool. yeah. fun little breakup like breaking up the you know kind of the sameness of like yep yep the monotony of uh, of all that i'm sure i'm sure it gets not to put words in your mouth but i'm sure it gets a little bit yeah routine you know yeah well and and it, it just kind of reminded me of like because because there was definitely and there is a little still, but you know, just wedding fatigue of like, okay, put out, you know, go to the, the inn at the bay, at the harbor, at the springs, at the golf club, by the water you can't swim in, and then, <laughs> you know, play out in the hot sun for you know a, an hour for cocktail, and nobody's out there because the, the air conditioning's inside, and and then, you know, like Uptown Funk's gonna give it to you, you know, Sweet Caroline, don't stop That's believing. So good. Yeah, so good. <laughs> is like, there a South Detroit? Yeah, is there is there a South Detroit? Like, <laughs> there's yeah. not, man. You know, there's not actually a South Detroit. <laughs> they got That's it wrong. wrong. <laughs> yeah. It's well, it, it eventually, like you know, you in in that rhythm, you're kind of like like I'm I'm grateful that it's an income, but I'm also like, all right, this motivates me to work really hard to get uh you know earth radio kind of where like 2019 for earth radio is like that's that's one of the, the hardest years i think i've ever worked and i yeah i want some version of that but with this new perspective of like oh yeah i need to you know take care of myself i've i've lost i think 45 pounds so far oh man kudos i it's you March. know when we get that gig uh, a couple weeks ago i saw that you had the big jug of water which i also am Rocking a big jug of water. Oh, nice. Not as cool as uh, <laughs> yours and Avdex, but gets the job done. That's been, and that's been a thing for me. Uh, I, I don't know how long you've been uh, uh, toting uh, one of these around, but like since June, I've been drinking like a gallon of water a day and it feels really good to do so. And it's not hard. I'm not like pushing myself to do it. I'm just like, oh yeah, this is already filled. So wherever I go, I'm just going to drink some water and feel that much better for it, you know? Yeah. And, and, and I've, you know, right. <laughs> I, uh, well, and also like just the, the thinking of like, what's, what's a good, I've, I've been saying this to different people. I've been chatting with like a default setting. Like what's my default? Cause as musicians we're you know, we're over caffeinated. We're, you know, too, too, some people too much drugs, some people too much alcohol. So, yeah. you know, not a lot of sleep, you know, weird hours, like hard to keep a consistent, like, you know, a sleep schedule or, you know, Absolutely. like mm -hmm. even just, even for me, like I, the only exercising I'm do, I've been doing since March is like, 
it's it's just been walks like i haven't done any like you know crazy you know p90x or something. yeah but i mean gigs are a lot of exertion too mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, especially when you're lugging heavy gear lugging keys lugging drums like that's that's a lot you know several several times a week that's something i really felt uh in mid quarantine was not having that <laughs> every week you know and like <laughs> stuff started to atrophy and i'm like getting out of like getting out of breath really easily like yep dang i didn't uh i took for granted how much uh that was kind of helping me to stay in shape or you know whatever shape uh, right. i was in you know but <laughs> at least main strength right <laughs> yeah so yeah. yeah i feel that a default I like it. Now, I think by default now, it's funny because now I feel a lot drier. Uh, like if mm. I haven't been drinking water, I start to like, um, I, I'm keyed into the effects of dehydration. Yep. I'm a lot more aware of it, you know, which is good. Yeah, I felt that with, um, you know, I've, I've been uh, having massage therapy sessions with um, Shelby, Shelby Schneider. Um, okay. She, you know, she's been doing it for I think seven years. Um, but in those sessions, it's like, you know, the first few times I went, I'm like, okay, is this like, what is this going to do? Like, because, you know, in my head, I'm like, I don't know how to take care of myself. So I'm just like, this right. is worth yeah. it. That um, seems like such a, when you don't do them often, it seems like such a, not frivolous expense, but such a luxury mm -hmm. to me, you know, in, in my mind. But it's like, I've, really been wanting please tell, tell me more because i've really been thinking about going along this path yeah it well when you said like how if you you know if you're not drinking water as consistently you you notice it more and you can react to it i've i've noticed with the massages it's like i notice like oh my my posture needs to change or like oh my you know i do need to stretch these parts of like i feel where you know i need to do more stretching whereas before yeah. it was just kind of like you know, you just were either numb or ignorant to some of the, some of those needs and, um, and just, you know, if the, how much stress that I, you know, would just shrug off that would still, you know, it's still in my, my muscles, like totally. all that, all that stress from not even just, you know, it, carrying gear, but like just in general <laughs> and, and realizing like, oh yeah, I really, you know, part of the issue with my shoulders or or my neck or something is because of all the stress and just of working or not, um, you know, getting the right quality of sleep. And that's one thing I've been trying to improve is um, with my, you know, with my space, like I have these blackout curtains. I, you know, I try and have my AC on kind of a a timer so that I don't like have it always cold. Cause I've noticed like, Oh, I've, if I'm sleeping when it's super cold, I don't, it hasn't been very restful or, you know, sure. I've been trying okay. different pillows, trying, you know, like, nice. Oh, let's yeah. make things comfortable for, <laughs> you know, Dude, sleep hydration. So important to, to, to the de-stress, which I think is like the ultimate goal for me is just less stress. Mm -hmm. Right, kind of what I was talking about earlier, where I was I was getting so stressed out about these gigs. Twenty nineteen, the end of twenty eight, or no, yeah, the end of twenty nineteen and into the beginning of twenty twenty was a huge working time for me. Like working harder on Barbarossa Brothers, which is kind of you know my original project, the thing that I you know co lead and write songs for and book and all that, and spend so much time uh, on that. And um, we had a great year in 2020 we were looking at a really good year you know and of course all that evaporated but it was like I, I put so much on myself during that time it's like how do i get back to that place and have that same sort of hustle but without the stress you know or even if i have to like dial back the hustle just a little bit <laughs> have a little bit better quality of life overall be better mm -hmm. right a better person a better musician better um you know, coworker, team member, that kind of thing. That's like, that's what I want to achieve, you know? And that's what I'm kind of like trying to push towards this year, you know? Yeah. Well, and, and I think of like, with, you know, recently I, I, uh, when I played rake beer project this past Thursday, um, mm -hmm. 
Christian Nickel took a clip of me soloing and I, and I was looking at, you know, just how I was seated and, you know, how I was playing just from a, a technical standpoint of like, like, how am I, am I, do I look relaxed? Am I tense? Like, am I, you know, doing too many unnecessary movements that are, you know, uh, you know, affecting my playing. And I noticed that like, I didn't look, um, as tense as I know I've, I've been playing like the gigs I did last year. I, I remember there were times where I'm like, why am I so like, I'm playing the same lines that I do, but I'm so tense. Is it, it like, mm. is it just cause I'm out of practice or like what, what's, what's up. And, and that gig immediately followed a, uh, a massage session. <laughs> so I was super, you know, loose, flexible, relaxed. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's how you sound that great is, you know, yeah, or sound comfortable. Don't you guys do like a yoga thing right before that too, for those gigs? Yeah, there's a... But that's probably just like overall vibe, I imagine is very chill in that space, probably. Yes, you know, very relaxed. That kind of thing. <laughs> that's, man, it's huge. It's like, it's, the, it's if, the, if anything is the secret, you know, that, that we need to unlock. <laughs> It's that, but it's just a good, you'll, you'll never like fully unlock it. I don't think you can just, you know, try to push closer to it of that yeah. total relaxation, like being your best self, playing your best and just all of that, you know, all the good stuff, none of the bad. When, and I think too, of like, you know, some people, you know, they, they know that like, you know, these pop stars, their writers or their green room stuff are like you know, some of them can be insane. And that just might be for, for who knows why, like, oh, I, I do, only the green M&Ms are like, so crazy yeah. Thing. yeah. Um, but then there are other times, I guess this is, it's still an extreme case. Cause you know, Vladimir Horowitz, there's not a lot of Vladimir Hor Horowitz pianists that have lived, uh, but he would tour, <laughs> he would tour with his grand piano and Order. to the point where like, he went overseas to Japan and was like, Hey, there's say they said they couldn't ship my piano here, but that's literally what I've done everywhere else in the world. And they're like, yeah, we can't do it. Like it's something's up. It's not going to get here in time for the concert. And then they were like, we have, we have this one though. It's really nice. You know, it's, it's, it's the same brand. And he's like, nah, I need my piano. And they're like, well, it, wait but you you gotta do the concert and he's like no not until my piano arrives and then they wouldn't let him <laughs> they wouldn't let him cancel the show or leave so like the show is still gonna happen but then he just spent a month in japan <laughs> and waiting for this piano yeah waiting for this piano and then he you know he did the concert was amazing and then just never went back to japan apparently <laughs> and wow. and so there's like hearing that story i don't i don't know if i want to be that insane but i think of people who like you know like tigran hamasian like he he doesn't gig on a keyboard like he he'll have you know a, this actually the same micro korg i have the micro korg xl he'll bring that and some pedals and stuff and maybe he'll have a Rhodes, but he needs you know a a, a well-maintained grand piano to do what he does because that's half of his sound is Absolutely. playing on a real piano yeah. um so i think of like that for for earth radio too we've been talking about that for our, our bookings going forward um being intentional about like what spaces have served us in terms of you know sound and staging and how we can better present the band but then also looking at the the holistic picture of the venue that we're not just shoved in a corner we're not just, you know, an, an item on somebody's checklist to get new customers. Like nice. we want to play spaces that it's built into the, the culture of, of, um, you know, of a business rather than just kind of a, you know, like, Oh, we need more people on our new patio. Let's get someone to play acoustic guitar every day for $50. Exactly. <laughs> and we have the same thing as musicians where we're like, got to have four gigs booked this week. Mm -hmm. Got to have that weekend filled. Got to have my month, you know, got to make my nut this month or whatever. Like we do the same thing. I do the same thing anyway, uh, speaking for myself. And if we can like let go of that a little bit 
and yeah, like you said, just be intentional about the the space that we're that we're playing in and the gigs that we're accept, accepting. Uh, one big thing in my area is just is just pay, you know, which that's really yeah. basic, but it's still a big issue uh, with what we're dealing with, where it's like, well, if we don't, you know, take gigs that uh, will, uh, how do I say this? If we only take gigs that pay this much then we're only going to have this many places or this one place where we can really play, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, I'm willing to make that sacrifice. If it means that, and it's not about pay, but it also, that reflects so many other things about, like you're saying, what do they, what do they value about live music? You know, is that really something that they're into supporting and fostering or is, yeah, is it just something on a checklist? You know, is it just, is it a product to them? the same as a, a couple of kegs or, uh, or the, you know, the, the liquor rack or whatever. Like, yeah, I, I understand that it's a business, but also uh, there's more that goes into it than that, you know? Yeah. Cause it's, it's like a lot of business owners. Well, you know, I'll, I'll make a generalization. Why not? A lot of business owners, Do it. <laughs> uh, they, you know, my, my experience has been, you know, there's, there's always like, oh, these venues are great or avoid these spots or, you know, roll the dice. It's a new place we haven't been. Um, but there are times where like, I know because of how good of an experience or how bad of an experience, like that they don't realize like, oh, they brought in this person who knows and talks to a lot of people in the community and who, ha and you know, doesn't mince words like mm -hmm. if if some place is bad i'm gonna say it like i'm not gonna be like no well if you play i'm gonna be like no this is how you know we <laughs> we drove six hours to play for five people and 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 they didn't really take care of us <laughs> exactly yeah there's been a lot of forgiveness in the past of or you know just making up for things uh, like you were saying oh well you know we didn't bring in that bigger crowd so maybe we just didn't deserve uh, treatment like humans, but, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I, I don't, I'm not interested in going that route. Uh, we got, there's a, a spot right in Bay city where, uh, we, uh, put on a show right before the pandemic actually, and we're treated really poorly and I'm not going to go back there, you know, and there's so many things that I can think of where I am just interested in minimizing it. What we always say is, you know, quality over quantity, which is just a great mantra to have anyway, but right. in order to make the quality happen, you have to cut back on the quantity. Yep. And that's, it's, it's definitely hard to do. And, you know, we're only just now thinking about that and, you know, we're approaching or we're going to be going into our fifth year as a band. So that, you know, the first couple of years just like take whatever we can get 2019 was a super sure. busy year um yep. and we learned a ton through that year and then even with 2020 it was like okay we can't we don't have the quantity but like let's you know what like can, do we like doing live streams and i guess not unless other people <laughs> will do them for us but <laughs> i feel that yeah. i was thinking about that earlier today i'm like yeah i don't want those live stream chops to uh to fall by the wayside because <laughs> <laughs> because I feel like there'll be times this winter when I want to draw on that, you know, and I 100% uh, also um, feel what you're saying about uh, having somebody else kind of running the stream rather than having to put it on yourself. That's, that's too much. You know, when we did the, the, uh, um, the Michigan Music Alliance Fest in, mm -hmm. in March, it was like, yep, we need somebody separate to help us make this happen. Yeah. And I'm so glad that we did that because otherwise it would have been first of all way way under production uh compared to what we had uh and also just so much stress right yeah. just, just a lot of stress for for that 30 minutes of time that we had to put ourselves out there to people so mm. and when you're stressed you're not putting on your best work anyway no yeah. well and, and i think of that that gig we did with mark like right towards the beginning yeah. of shutdowns with that Aaron Zindel's spot and just the like walking into that and being like oh this is this is should be this this should be the standard but you know like we're all just yeah it was the exception yeah it's, for sure and unfortunately that you know it was down to 
you got to have under 10 people in a space or something very quickly after that. So it didn't, yep. it didn't last. And, and it was such a, such a great initiative by Aaron, but uh, things were just so uncertain. You know, there would have been a lot of backlash if she tried to continue doing that. Yep. And there hasn't been a chance really to, to try and bring it back. But yeah, you're absolutely right. That was, <laughs> that was a pretty cool example of somebody like springing into action right away to, uh, to make that happen. I'm glad we did that actually. Yeah, it was, good, it was a good baseline of like, this is how it could be. Yeah, yeah. And, and just seeing like the, you know, throughout that year, the, the, the people in, in our corners in the community, like you really, you really felt the people who were, you know, active in supporting, even, even if it was like, oh, they tipped me, you know, 10 bucks uh, on my live stream, and they've been there every week, or, you know, they bought they bought merch or, you know, any money spent at all in, during a pandemic where everyone's trying to save, like, you know, you, you notice every purchase and dollar and, and you Absolutely. notice the people showing up, you know, showing up when, when you know, it's going to be like, oh, they're running the live stream themselves. Okay. We might have some, you know, issues with audio <laughs> or internet or right. whatever, There's, you know, uh, uh, Chad, what events on the other side, he's going to be like, okay, we can't hear this. Audio's <laughs> out like immediately as soon as the audio goes out, I would see his comment pop up. Audio out, <laughs> like <laughs> Chad's on it. Okay, which it it's so funny when like because that's I prefer that a t like a thousand yeah. percent more than someone who just like leaves and I'm like yeah we want to tell you right yeah absolutely yeah and it's like the and that that was something that I think a lot of people who who it was their first time like regularly viewing live stream internet type stuff where like w I, I think of people who are experienced with live streaming on like youtube or twitch or you know facebook uh and having you know like there are people who have like tens of thousands of people watching their content so chat becomes this like entity that you can address as a as a body but then you also have means of you know people being able to like tip to get their comment highlighted or like put it a cue so that they get attention or they can converse with the streamer or whatever okay. um oh, yeah so there's it's like we're so far in a lot of other areas beyond just like oh yeah it's like the comment section you know you could say hi and put some emojis it's like no there's there's like entire subcultures that can be built within you know, a chat room, if you get even, you know, even like 70 people, like that's still, you know, that's bigger than most high school classrooms. Sure. <laughs> and that's a hard enough thing to keep. It's, it's like if a teacher's entire day was just shoved into one classroom, like all the students they see through a day. Yeah. Um, if, but yeah, it's, you know, I, it, it was interesting to have a learning process for kind of everybody where we're all learning more about the tech, more about how to present it, more about what things kind of translate better on live yeah. stream versus just live. And that was such an interesting time, you know, yeah. Thanks for being back on that. It's, uh, it, it really was a, a time of discovery too, but also so much uncertainty. I mean, yeah, I don't need to retread it, but it's just <laughs> so much, uh, so much going on. There's so much to think about all the time, you know? And then obviously it's not like, it's not like things are over, but we're in a, such a different place now too. Mm -hmm. Even thinking back to a year ago from this date, like how different things were. Yeah. And in some ways, in some ways good, in some ways bad. It's, you know, to get a, a little kind of real about it for a sec, it's been a pretty dark summer over here. We, we lost a couple of people, you know, um, good friend of uh, Barbarossa brothers who uh, actually died by suicide in June. You oh, know, wow. The night, the night of our first show back, um, I showed up to uh, to the gig. It was at the Saginaw Art Museum, and I uh, I got there. I got a call from Amy, my wife. She goes, "Hey, did you hear about Charlie?" And he had, like just been found, and the communication kind of started rippling out through the community. But I was the first one on site, so I had to go in and tell the venue and and the, actually the sound guy who had all, already had all his stuff set up that that charlie had passed and wow and then i had to talk to my band as they started to arrive and we all sort of kind of experienced it together which was which was kind of incredible and 
a little bit miraculous that we all were together at that time. But yeah, a good friend of uh, of ours who who was who would work with us. He was a, a sound engineer and um, you know just uh, uh, really kind of a, a pillar of the the music community in Bay City. So that's colored the summer. Of yeah, course, you know, and like we were talking about with uh, your uh, issues in July, like with all everything else that's been going on as busy as it would be stressful summer in any situation, there's still been like all these other other things to try and process, you know, all this darkness and uncertainty. And uh, yeah, it's just been it's just been crazy. So I'm ready for things to, to turn towards the positive side. Yes. <laughs> and like, I feel like a lot of this stuff comes in waves, you know, doesn't it? They say like deaths come in threes and whatnot. And mm -hmm. there's been, we've had way more than three, but, uh, uh, you know, I think things got to turn around at some point Yep. where we, uh, where we start to see some light. I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to the next couple months because, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be going back to masked up, but, um, I hope it's the last time. Yes, that's all I can hope for. Yeah. It's... Yeah, otherwise we're just caught in a loop. <laughs> you know, it's like feel good about the summer, hey, everybody's <laughs> outside. And then oh yes, back to the darkness. Yeah, back to I've I've noticed I've had to because a lot of a lot of my content that I consume, if it's not just purely f you know, for fun or you know, it's mm -hmm. a random show, a lot of it's like a lot of it's infotainment with like it because when you say that you think like oh, okay it's you know it's like tidbits of facts and tidbits of sure. information dribbled out um but a lot of it's been like longer form stuff uh, you know a lot of things reflecting on history and like you know how we're all culturally in certain certain messes and aspects of like you know, whether it's like wars we've been involved in or, you know, social movements or, uh, you know, it, it's kind of the, you know, the thing like, like with leadership, like it, it's kind of the, like the, if you give a mouse a cookie, the, the book, if you, if you ever read that yeah. book, oh yeah, it's, it's like, you know, some people were like, oh, it's, it's a cute story about, you know, this, this mouse who's like, oh, he just, you know, he's hungry. He wants a lot of stuff, but it's more like okay if you give someone these things this is going to happen like if you give someone wealth yeah. power influence and you know very little pushback this is going to happen so <laughs> just add time yeah and there it you, you know it 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 goes it could be as high up in terms of authority as you can get but also even you know all the all the people who are selling like silver solution at the beginning of the pandemic and being like this is a cure the colloidal silver in this in this this jar and and or like <laughs> you know people people who are like already you know like uh like jim baker he he sold some silver to all of his scared sure, followers of course. um yeah and, why wouldn't you take advantage right yeah, he's like, I've already been to prison. I know what that's like. <laughs> I've got the money to <laughs> to not be in a worse prison if I get in prison again. Mm -hmm. Um and that's I, Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so it's it's like I'm I'm now having to I I'm having to make a shift because I you know, I've I've been posting stuff onto Facebook and I and I don't always post everything as much, as often as I can sometimes post. Um and I've been having to take that, like, w that step of like, okay, sometimes I type out something and it's just me organizing my thoughts. And I'm like, okay, I don't really want to have this argument with people today. <laughs> so I'm going to just delete it and just know that that's my position. And that, that at least satisfies my brain of like, okay, I have, I've organized my thoughts in a way that like makes sense if I need to defend this position. Um, but nice. then yeah, the, right yeah, and just also like you know trying to trying to realize or trying to remember too like we all saw or a lot of us saw the you know the um social dilemma the Netflix documentary about like no, I still haven't watched that I need to check it out yeah it's I, it's yeah. it's super you know a, a summary could just be like they interview all these people who started or worked at you know, Facebook, Twitter, you know, YouTube, all these social sites that are like the main traffic sites. And they're all kind of like, oops, 
Like we made these systems that <laughs> have resulted in, you know, like, yes, this lady's flower shop can now be found way easier in her tiny little town because she has access to the internet and the algorithm can push that out to flower shop enthusiasts. But then you also have people who are using it as propaganda tools to like, you know, like what happened in Myanmar, right. like just yeah, all the, the clan down the road also is able to use that uh, <laughs> equally well as the flower shop, unfortunately. So, yeah, so <laughs> it's it's been like as much as it's, you know, because I like learning and I like, you know, the entertainment aspect sometimes of like how comedy can can kind of cut through a lot of mm -hmm. like bu bu bureaucratic speech. Um, but now I've, I'm realizing I have to kind of like how there's like screen time limiters on your on on phone devices now it, it like be conscious of like okay i've watched two hours of afghanistan war coverage like let's watch someone open pokemon cards <laughs> like let's counter that with away from it for a just bit. something one, uh, joy one and... film for me through the pandemic was um the closer look with seth meyers Oh yeah, I haven't watched any of those? But it, it's yes. you know, kind of a re, like retread of current events and whatnot. And again, with the humor, he just really cuts through. And it's been such a fun like evolution to watch him go because now at this point they've been over a year without an audience, you know. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's like if that's like his decision or the decision of the show or or where that's coming from. But it's been interesting to see that get weirder and weirder and weirder <laughs> as it's gone. And, and like he's drawing on like improv background now and he'll have uh, Amy Poehler show up every once in a while and they'll go back and forth with like some improvisation a little bit. And it's just him trying to crack up his staff. Right. Basically, it's his writing <laughs> staff and, and the crew and whatever that he's performing for trying to get him, you know, like we like when we as musicians are trying like playing for playing at a festival, playing for other musicians, and we want to give our best, you know, yep. and reach for something a little more. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that, and that's been uh, along the same lines, something where, uh, like, I've drawn a lot uh, of comfort coming back to that day after day, but um, it can get dark, too. And it's it's good to get away from the news, get away from the screens. Yes. and 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 just, like, just that reminder of, like, you know, be another, you know, the social dilemma talks about how, you know, with the, the algorithms, like how people, yeah. And I kind of mentioned it a, a little bit ago, the, everyone kind of gets quartered off in their own little zones um, in terms of like what they see and, and what information they can take in. And, and, you know, that's another, another thing for musicians. It's like, how do we get through that when we're just trying to post about shows <laughs> and, right. and like, Hey, do you want to check out music? Uh, you know, <laughs> everything seems to be on fire, but we're playing at this, this venue. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it, yeah, some, sometimes it's hard to, with, with everything going crazy, it, it's hard to feel like anything that we're doing is of significance. Right. In a lot of ways, you know, but it is of, of significance and it, it can be a good release or an escape for for many people, you know, whether it's a stream or a concert or uh, what have you. Yeah, I was I was definitely reminded of that this this summer, you know, the shows, whether it was, you know, at the listening lawn or a festival or, you know, the city built brewing gigs, uh, like just to see not only repeat people coming to hang out and see music but also just the people who even if it was just for a second to just kind of come up and show their appreciation or like you know say something like man like i've been looking forward to this concert for two weeks like or you know a month like just to you see know, the impact feel like the appreciation factor is at a high level yes and that's something I think I had like a, a bitchy little post on Facebook <laughs> like two months ago where I was like, oh, I'm just not feeling the appreciation for live music. I was all bitter about something stupid. Yeah. And um, <laughs> it's okay. So maybe it's maybe it's not like like this like huge throng of support, you know, as I might have imagined. Right. But there are little things where yeah, people are coming up and and are a lot are a lot more a lot freer to say, oh, thank you so much. We missed coming to concerts, you know. Thank you guys so much for playing today. And it, it is on a deeper level of this mm -hmm. appreciation, which that's all it was ever going to be was was somebody, you know, hopefully many people in their hearts and their minds having a little more appreciation for what it takes to put on this concert, you yes. know, or, or what it takes to uh, to do 
what you're doing to play the piano like a boss, you know, or, yeah. or uh, you know, be in a band and, and try to write good songs. And that's, uh, that's worth a lot. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And it's, it, it's, it's a good reminder too, of like the, I mentioned the people in your corner and I, I think I only, you know, brought up just other musicians or other people who you kind of notice they're in the scene supporting, um, but yeah, just having it, having an audience that's, that there's something to like feedback with, like the, mm-hmm. the show we did this past Thursday, you know, we've been doing these rake beer shows, um, every, well, they haven't been around that long, but we, you know, we started doing kind of a monthly thing last summer and then right. we continued it this, this summer. And last Thursday felt like, it felt like that moment of like, oh, everyone here is here for this environment for the music for the beer for each other like it's it felt like you know okay we have 80 or probably 70 people like just all you could hear it in like how everyone was responding how people were listening how people you know people were dancing like there's that moment of like oh this is why we build you know this is why we spend you know six months before an idea like putting it together, getting it ready for the summer, you know, figuring out where we're playing, getting the word out to people. Like it's so that we could just keep building out a community around, you know, the sounds we're making. (laughs) That's beautiful, man. And it doesn't have to be 10,000 people. Nope. You know, 70 people with the right intention and like everybody being on the same wavelength is as gratifying or probably much more. Yes. That's really special. Yeah, I I don't know because I've I mean I've had times where I've played in front of a lot of people, but it's always it's always in like a you know and uh, as an accompanist or part of a a group off to the side or you know like just for kind of a it, when, it's, like, when it's your own thing, something of that that you've brought from yourself, you and your friends, that yeah. is always going to be more gratifying than being like a side man. And I do a lot of both, you know, side man work um front man or, or co-lead or whatever co-fronting uh a band like barbarossa brothers and yeah it they are both scratch an itch there i love doing both equally i wouldn't say uh, i'm more into one or the other but there's a, a higher level of gratification a lot of the time with that thing that you've brought to fruition on your own you know that you can own right like i've yes. spent a lot of time as a side man in other bands where we'd have be doing this grand thing and going to this amazing festival or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, this is great. I'm loving being here, but, uh, it wasn't mine. It wasn't my accomplishment, if that makes sense. Yeah. And well, and it's really informed, you know, like last year there, there's definitely a chunk of the year where I'm like, I would take any gig right now. And then, then it shifted to, yep. well, no, I don't want to sure. take, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like maybe not any gig. There they are. <laughs> yeah. And, and now, you know, it, 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 I think with, with earth radio coming up, we're going to be recording our next album again at third coast, but with, uh, Paul Clemson, who is, I guess he's, he lives, lives in Niles. I don't know if he has places elsewhere, but he's, he's worked with, you know, like Jill Scott, Alicia Keys. He's on tour at the roots right now. Like wow, okay, he's just di- dialed into a lot of the similar vibes and artists that we listen to in in the band and and you know with that it's like okay we're gonna get a a, an industry set of ears that's heard you know a million different recordings and presentations of styles uh but you know not that we weren't getting that with like bill or you know kevin's ears just working with a lot of different clients um but just that extra like okay, he's, he's really in the industry. In it, yeah, in somebody it. who's keyed in towards, like, actually producing this music. Yeah. And, sure. wow. That's and yeah, so it, it's, like, it feels like that natural, like, all right, we have this opportunity that we're, we're all collectively as a band going to work towards, and uh, it makes me... You know, I start, I've, I've been noticing more of like a gut reaction to like things I know I don't want to do. And, and, you know, I'll get hit up about like things that 
are like, Hey, do you want to like play another cocktail gig at a restaurant? And it's like, not, not right now. <laughs> I just want to the like, thing is the more you turn that stuff down, the better you get at it. Yep. And the easier it gets for you to discern, uh, is this something I should turn down or is this something I should take? Because but just, uh, from my own standpoint, it's tough to turn down a gig, mm -hmm. right? That was drilled into me, uh, in school and through the early part of my career. Don't, Take every gig, take every gig. Don't ever say no, right? Yeah. That's, that yeah. <laughs> in. So it's hard for me to push against that conditioning, which I understand why it's there and that you do need to take every gig that when you're at a certain level, but, uh, yeah, whole new world, uh, I'm feeling right now. And I have gotten better at, uh, turning things down or just saying, no, thanks, man. E e even if, even if I don't have anything to do that night or anything to do at that certain point. Uh, I look at it, uh, try to look at it rationally, unemotionally and go, uh, this isn't really going to serve me. Uh, not that that's all that it's about, but right. this is actually going to make it harder for me to do that thing I have to do tomorrow yes. or to be my best th this coming weekend. And if I can take this night off and spend it at home or spend it taking a walk, uh, or, or doing something gratifying for myself, then I will be that much better for it. Yes, I've that gotten, is. I'm getting better at, do, at doing this stuff, <laughs> right? I, so this is what I've been thinking about is, uh, gaining all that perspective, uh, over the last year and a half that we've had mm -hmm. through the pandemic. And then this summer being so busy and so, cr so much craziness was like, almost like the inoculation period <laughs> where like, I just had to get inundated with everything so that I would start to feel comfortable, uh, day one, here we are today with taking some time. Yes. Right. And having a, a month where it's a lot lighter. Okay. Usually I'd be sweating, uh, right about now that I don't have that much going on, but I'm not because of the summer that we just had. And because of the time previous to that, where I realized that the gigs will always be there. Yep. Stuff's always going to come up and I'm not fearing that anymore that all one day, everything's just going to dry up because that's what happened. Right. Right. So yeah. I'm not afraid of that anymore. I've been through it. Yeah. And yeah, we've all, we've all seen what happens, you know, like that worst case scenario actually came to be. Yeah. I, not, I, you know, and hopefully, I mean, if we took care of ourselves and looked out for each other, then uh, most of us are still here. Yeah. And, and seeing like, you know, cause I, I have, I have some musicians that I talk to that, you know, I, I, I caught up with Joe Vasquez recently, a bass player who, you know, great bass player came out of Lansing. I played with him for a couple years in the, um, in Benjamin James band. Um, okay. Yeah. And he, you know, like he lives in Seattle now and he was explaining, you know, cause that city's crazy expensive to live in. And there's, sure. you know, there's a bunch, there's, it's a tech center and a lot of, you know, like Microsoft, Nintendo, Sony, all these big tech companies. And I'm sure Amazon has stuff there. Um, that like they all it it incentivizes a lot of of people who want to work for those companies and then you know the rent just keeps going up and up and up um but he was talking about how and and I've heard this from a couple other people too in 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 New York um that you know anywhere with high cost of living they found that balance of like okay I have a job that still you know it's like uh, you know, Joe publishes websites like uh, website publishing. And then another friend of mine learned coding and he works for, um, the, uh, website Bloomberg, like he codes, um, their website for different things. Um, I don't really know all the, if it's like security or if it's just like presentation or whatever. Um, but people but who are, yeah. yeah, they're finding that like, that has, you know, the necessity of needing an income but then also finding a job that's like, oh, this, this will help my music in the long run because it will afford me the ability to like take the quality gigs over the quantity, but also, you know, pay my rent and live in an area that I want to live in. Um, and I think that's, you know, for a lot of people that, that was a, a wrestle, a thing they were wrestling with is like, is, am, am I done me? being a musician in, or in yeah. January, 2020, I mean, one of the worst things I could think of was, uh, this uh, sounds really <laughs> shitty of me, but one of the worst things I could think of was like having to take a day gig. 
beyond mm-hmm. like beyond teaching okay you know everything i've done for the past 12 years has been music related yes whether it was teaching or recording or gigging or something like that you know and in the middle of of all this you know for about a year i've on and off done like shipped grocery delivery that kind of thing yeah. i haven't for a couple of months because i've been so busy but also it wasn't that bad mm-hmm. okay and it was it, and it's something that i can do um uh, during the day and then even like if i have a weekend off that weekend is off and I'm, I'm not sweating it. I'm not trying to hustle to, to make something happen. So yes. Yeah. Like going back to the worst case scenario happened and I'm still here. Yes. And my wife still lives with me and she loves me <laughs> and my family's doing okay. And like, everything's okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's, it's left me with a completely different perspective. And I, in a lot of ways, I'm a better person for having come through it. I am a better person for coming through it. Yeah, I definitely feel like I'm in a better, better space than, than last year, or even like, you know, even earlier this year, like, you know, the, the, yeah. uh, it was just kind of telling myself, like, the one thing I know how to do is work hard. Like, that's not, it's not even an issue. Like, it, you know, no amount of like, some dude on Fox being like, they just don't want to work. It's like, no, nah, I'm working. I'm just, you know, <laughs> you just don't see me because right. we don't know each other. And this <laughs> I don't want dialogue. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, yeah, it's like knowing, you know, I've, I've done those things where, you know, you, you play late into the night, you drive home super late, get up early, you know, cram two gigs, sometimes even three into a Saturday or something, or like, you know, just, I think of my, uh, I always reference my sophomore year at Grand Valley, um, because usually music programs have like a, you know, they have that mid performance review or like a, you know, a, a checkpoint where it's like, it's not just your jury. It's also us kind of checking to see if you've done all your bass classes for music. If you're like on track to graduate and are, are serious about committing to being a musician Or if we recommend like, Hey, take some time, some perspective, maybe, you know, Grand Valley, you know, had that built in to kind of incentivize people to, you know, really focus on the music portion, but also as a way of being like, Hey, like maybe you should just get a bachelor of arts and like then uh-huh. you run sooner and you're can... really smart. I wish Wayne state had had something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's and, really good. And, I like and that. well, and, you know, I, that semester leading up to it was, you know, it defined, little did I know, it defined the next two years of my schooling because I started that semester leaving the Grand uh, Grand Valley's New Music Ensemble, which, you know, my professor was not happy about because that, that thing is, you know, it's, it's a year program, essentially, that he, 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 get only picks like eight people to be in the ensemble and they're in it for the whole year. And then that grows the strength of the rep and the performances. Um, but it was because I was going to take a job at, uh, magic steel. <laughs> um, and I was my friend's hey, dad, magic, magic steel. Yeah. Uh, so it's a steel company that's kind of, I think it's Clyde Park area. It, you could see it. It drive you drive past it going 131 South, kind of before yeah. you hit. So not music related at all. No, it it was it was like you know my parents at the time were like, hey, we, you know you should get a job, and, and I'm like, but I'm already doing all this work for the school, and you know they're increasing my stipend to be in the musical, and like they're, you know I'm I'm doing accompanying work, and they're like, yeah, but you should get a job. And I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll try a job. It's <laughs> and, never enough. Why is it never enough? Yeah. It's not enough that I'm like yeah. never home. Cause I'm always practicing and doing performances and stuff. But, um, then, so my, my friend's dad was, uh, well, I think he's, I don't know, maybe he got a promotion since then it's been years, but he, he was the operations manager at magic steel right and they have a position that's like, it's definitely like entry level or like not totally necessary, but can be a, a job created, I guess, um, where, you know, as people are moving things around the, the, the space on forklifts, they have those pallets that, you know, different size steel coils. And my job was to, you know, I'd get a stack of them dumped 
like by some forklift and I'd have to, you know, sort and sift through them and be like, okay, like, you know, they're all color coordinated, different size, the different sizes. And I would have to make sure like, okay, is the color visible? Like spray that. Okay. Use a nail gun, fix this, cut a piece of wood, you know, use a table saw and, you know, be in a loud environment for four hours. Uh, but my schedule was like, I, I would get up, I would drive downtown because I didn't have a on campus parking. So I would drive downtown, take the bus up to Allendale campus. Um, mm -hmm. And then I'd have 8.30 math and then an 11 or no, 10 o'clock class. And then I would, I would get done and go back home. I'd have, you know, roughly an hour ish, a little bit more to uh, change, grab some food and then go uh, clock in for my shift at magic steel. I'd work one to five. And then I'd get out of magic steel, not go home. I would just go right back downtown, get on the bus, go back up to campus. And then six o'clock to 10 or 11 was the musical uh, rehearsal. And they had increased my stipend for it. So I was like, yeah, I kind of have to do it. And I did that for like two and a half months <laughs> and was just like, this is not, this is not feasible. But then it's... <laughs> But then instead of like, so I, I quit Magic Steel around spring break. And then I literally, I, you know, in my head is still like, I need, I need an income, I need money. So I took on, you know, like 15 accompanying things. So I was, you know, wow. like four saxophones all playing similar rep, you know, a bunch of, you know, senior and junior recitals with more involved programs, you know, a bunch of juries. And, you know, in my head, I'm like, maybe they'll just, because my, my solo rep was failing. So I was like, okay, maybe they'll just, uh, you know, they'll see all the work I'm doing and that'll count towards something. And of course it didn't. They're like, oh, you only learned one of your three pieces. But I had tried to, I had tried to yeah, cram. I'm doing all this other stuff over here. Yeah. And I, and I right. was like, I tried to cram for my jury. I, I spent like four days, like but my, my friends who were in the honors college, they're, uh, the Honors College has practice rooms in um, the lower level of one of the buildings. And I would stay the night at, you know, sleep on my friend's couch. I'd get up early when I knew I could get into the, the basement practice room, but before the music building opened and I would just practice until lunch, get lunch, and then go to the music building, practice, leave, go back to the Honors College, sneak in a couple more hours before they shut those doors and then you know try and sleep and <laughs> and of course it yeah. didn't work but we we didn't get into this line of work to be lazy no and we're, <laughs> we're we're here to work hard that's another thing that that really affected me during the pandemic uh, was uh finding some of that self-discipline i've never been super like a really disciplined um practicer and working on my craft and i always have to force myself to do it it's never been like a joy uh i love to play obviously but but it takes like a little bit of extra like pushing myself to make it happen and the thing that happened especially like come 2021 like in the depths of the winter was i really did start to enjoy it and i really did just start to wake up in the morning going yeah i'm ready to practice for the next three hours and then see what the day holds and have some students yep. or whatever and like <laughs> that's another thing that I, I just want to hold on to forever because it's, because it's been great. You know, another aspect of what uh, I wanted to pull into this summer was just this newfound, uh, not ability, but just, yeah, newfound skills, uh, that I picked up and, and keeping that practice regimen going, staying ahead of stuff. You know, if I know that I have to learn 20 John Prine tunes in a month, which I just did that yesterday or <laughs> days ago, obviously, right. um, I want to be, you know, a couple weeks ahead of that charting everything out. So I'm not just cramming for yep. this, you know, and that's, uh, that's been, that's been really good, but yeah, it's, we, we push ourselves really hard and then, and then it seems like it's not enough yep. because maybe the money doesn't, doesn't quite match the effort that we've mm -hmm. put in through no fault of our own. Right. But if you keep pushing yourself like that, if you keep working hard like that, the benefits will show, I believe. Yeah. It's, it's the only reason I'm, you know, I've, I've had people 
who've sat down with me to just, you know, I'm, I'm always open to chat with people about when they're like, how do you, like you do it full time, right? Like how, how do you do it? And it's like, well, <laughs> here's work it full time. Yeah. Here's my life. Uh, like, yeah. you know, there's good, there's good elements to it. There's, you know, tricky elements to it. I, you know, and there's things that in general, like, you know, if you're not really taught about, you know, something like financial discipline or like, certain things that are like, Hey, if you put your money towards these things, you'll have this kind of cushion in case things yeah. go, go weird. And the fact that the yeah. fact that in, in college, you can go to like get a performance degree or say a music business degree is bonkers because every performance degree should be a music business degree. Yes. I mean, like <laughs> you shouldn't be able to like take the, the, get this performance degree without taking all these business classes. Okay, because yeah, you hit the nail on the head. That's something we all should be well aware of is uh, uh, obviously business, but also, yeah, financial awareness and that kind of thing. That's that's another thing. Like looking back on it and, and processing things, there's so much that I finally had the time or the necessity to pull together this mm -hmm. year. Like finally getting some taxes, like tax issues together where everything's been piecemeal before finally found an accountant uh that i like yeah. you know that uh that i felt like was in you know looking out for my best interest and uh and that was huge yes for getting things together financially but yeah <laughs> if you if you want to do it full time you're going to work it full time way more than full time hours yep and it also is going to take time and patience because it's not like uh booking a, a full time job where you walk in and and collect your salary that week yes. <laughs> and all of a sudden you have a full time salary you're working full time but you're not getting that salary not right away yeah and you know, that's that will come but it takes time right and that's where like you know i see a lot of people who you know they or or specifically i think of someone like Eddie Coddington like he he used school, I think, in the in all the right ways, where he he learned his voice as a musician, and you know, kind of took more chances and risks in terms of like what he was submitting to, you know, what you know, what things he was pursuing, and 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 having the ability, like, okay, I'm in school. These are the expectations that are like set in terms of like classes or performances and whatever and then everything else you have room to like explore production or you know he's doing photography or fashion like not to say everyone has to be exactly like that but in terms of multifaceted like oh yeah if you're performing you're gonna run into gear so like maybe learn how to route audio and then now you have a way to you know set up your own home streaming thing or you know help running sound the next time they're like, yeah, the bands run sound. It's like, all right, I guess we got to know how to plug stuff in. <laughs> um, uh, I did a lot of reading over the past year, and one book that I picked up was a short little um, sort of like biographical uh, uh, book by um, Leslie Odom Jr., who was in Hamilton. Oh, yeah. Uh, this book a couple years ago, um, and I was just rereading it uh, this morning. Uh, it's a short read, but uh, I came upon the chapter where he's talking about being in school and how how much more license he wishes schools gave their students uh to fail and to yes. take and to fall on their face because if you don't do it in school uh, as soon as you get out of the workforce it's so much there, there's so much more stakes right yep than trying everything you can while you're in school that's something i wish I, that i'd done more in school is not played it safe and taken more risks and tried, you know, to do so. I was uh, jazz studies at Wayne state and I wish I had like done more with like weird avant type <laughs> stuff The you know, the new music collective and that kind of thing. The opportunities were there, but oftentimes I was more focused on what was outside of school or, you know, gig opportunities and that kind of thing, which not that many gig opportunities for uh, avant musicians, let's face it. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, and uh, and now I'm really interested in that kind of stuff, and I, I hear groups uh, making those moves, but it's hard to put yourself out there doing something like that if, you've, if you're just getting into it, right? 
So, yeah. yeah that's, that's a really good point about uh, taking risks when uh, when you're young, when you're in school, or, or whatever, you know, early in your career when uh, you can fall flat on your face. And, oh, well, those, those people saw it, but... <laughs> All these people didn't see it, right? Yeah, so. I, I think of all the times that, you know, that, that same semester, um, I remember distinctly um, uh, this um, uh, French horn player. She um, actually plays in the, in the Beer Keller Boys, the Oompa Polka Band that's around West Michigan. Um, a lot cool. of, it's a Grand Valley graduate they're yeah they they lean into you know the tradition they but they also write their own original stuff here and there um and i was i was accompanying her on a mozart tune and it was for her jury and i was you know i was so obviously busy and tired and you know just like surviving on caffeine and smoothies from the from the sure. student center um and I didn't do what literally I had done for like every other accompanying part where like, okay, I print out, you know, 14 pages and then they're all single sided because, oh, the, you know, the double sided sometimes in the three ring binders harder to turn where the, the two single sheets taped, like it's a little bit of a stronger binding and you can like, yeah. I don't know, it's easier for me to turn them. Yeah, I, I didn't even hole punch these pages. So I had, you know, like seven pages and then seven pages, <laughs> just like oh, in two no. layers. And of course, like I get to a point where it's like, I'm playing, everything's fine. Oh, four of them fell. Uh, da, 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 da. And I was like, okay, C, uh, F, like I kind of knew like the changes and I was just playing like scale runs and chords trying to like, and then the professor just stopped me like, oh, just, just let her finish. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> no but yeah you know that now, was three low, people it saw seems that like the end of the world at the time but it's low stakes yeah it's like three people saw that <laughs> yeah <laughs> or um you know double booking myself and having some you know intern of the young business grand valley whatever person being like they were expecting background i'm making sure you're not working in this town again did this and i'm like <laughs> i'm literally going to be playing there next Aww, week like <laughs> that's adorable <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. i was more you know she it was based on recommendation from a professor so i was more you know concerned like hey sorry i made this mistake like you know that's not what i normally do and she understood but yeah, like in that moment, you feel like, oh, I, I, I just. <laughs> Another so. great quote in that book. Um, I don't lose. Either I win or I learn. Yeah. And that kind of says it all. That's, you know, that's we got to learn great. from mistakes. I think, yeah, yeah it was it attributed to Nelson Mandela. So. Oh, nice. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Like he might be wise or something. Right. <laughs> might be a wise person. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, I think that's a, a perfect spot to to wrap this up. I I know uh, I could just keep talking with you for hours like we normally do. We always um, have great conversations. Yeah, it's always good talking to you, man, for sure. Yeah, glad to hear that. You know, there's there's clarity and 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 progress, and you know, just the 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 unit over in Bay City is doing well. And yeah, man, yeah, it is it is good, and it's. Uh... Yeah, it's just I have high hopes for the year, you know, for uh, for where we are this time next year. And, yes, uh, you know, I look forward to yeah, just more clarity and, and less stress all the time, and just being better. You know, that's that's all I want is just to be to be my best self. Yeah, uh, where should people find you? You know, all the projects you're in. Yeah, well, so I won't list everything, but. Um, <laughs> Barbarossa Brothers is uh, near to my heart, and as uh, we have an album on Spotify, so Barbarossa is B A R B A R O S S A, two S's. Uh, Barbarossa Brothers. So you look for that. I also play with Aaron Zindel and the Ragbirds and Mark Lavin Good Bands. Um, that's you know three of my main things right there. So, and we're on social media, but a lot of what I get done th these days is like on Instagram. So uh, that's just at Lauren Kranz. Yeah, on Instagram, you know, and that's where I kind of share 
product, projects or music or uh, whatever. I've been uh, pretty lackluster social media lately, which <laughs> need to get better at that, but uh, it's been busy too. So I'll always try to, like, if I'm at a gig, I try to, like, do a little, little, uh, like, look at that. <laughs> do around in the story or whatever, you know, that kind of thing. I was never into this, in the stories. Now I'm trying to get more into that um, uh, versus posts versus your, your feed. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Look me up on Instagram and, uh, you know, love to hear from people and uh, make new connections. Awesome. And it, it was uh, Major Chords for Minors is the... Major yeah. Chords for Minors dot org. You can check out what we're doing. Uh, that's strictly Saginaw based at the moment. But uh, yeah, we're uh, we're doing some pretty cool work and always accepting. It's uh, it's actually, uh, I didn't talk about that at all, but it's a nonprofit and it's grant funded, but also donation funded. We get no money from the state or anything like that, but what we do is offer a, like a 30 minute, uh, 30 minute music lesson to kids age eight to 18 at no cost to them. Mm. So anybody can sign up, you know, uh, and uh, I'm one of, uh, at this point, three instructors who, uh, who works there. And it's just, uh, it's just a really cool program to be a part of. And it's been great. I've been working with them since 2015. And uh, it's just all good stuff. And a lot of kids who, probably wouldn't have found music uh, as part of their lives have been enriched by it you know and i've been honored to be to be uh, among the teachers that were uh, teaching you know awesome yeah that's all wonderful uh yeah thanks for hanging out for however much time it's been <laughs> yeah, i'm gonna uh, enjoy this beautiful day take a walk with the dog yes i'm probably gonna go well, I'll see how humid it is. Maybe I'll go for a walk in the evening, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome, dude. Okay, well, uh, yeah, great to talk with you always. And yes. hopefully we get to play uh, together soon. Yeah, I'll keep an eye out for, you know, Mark Lavin good thing or whatever's coming next. <laughs> dude, take care of yourself. Awesome. You too. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for listening to this interview or watching. You know, you can watch these on YouTube. Um, if you didn't know that already, but thank you for checking this out. You know, it's always wonderful to chat with Lauren Kranz. You know, we've been on tours together with Mark Lavengood and just to have that kind of camaraderie, you know, it, it fires up every time we get together, you know, we have a lot of great conversations and we've done a lot of cool things together. So it's nice touching base with him because I've only gotten to see him a couple times this summer uh, with all of the busy work we've been doing. So thanks again for listening. Uh, if you are subscribed to YouTube, thank you. If not, subscribe to it, hit the bell, all that good stuff. Like the video, comment, all the interactive things help inform the algorithm overlords that push this out to the planet and, you know, decides what content is good or bad even though people have subjective tastes in art and it's a you know it's not it can't be <laughs> coded algorithmically apparently um but all that aside you know hey i'm glad you listened and maybe you learned something maybe you learned something new about the area you live in or what you want to pursue or some insight into what you're doing in your own creative pursuits so uh, we'll have more of these conversations in the future episodes of Mitten Backstage, so we'll see you next time.